Michael, thank you so much. In today's Smoky Mountain Minute, we're talking about a podcast miniseries called Sepia Tones Exploring Black Appalachian Music. And in to tell us all about it is internationally recognized folk singer, musician, storyteller. You are the jack of all trades. We have Sparky Rucker in. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you. Here. And of course, yeah, you're, you. you're a Knoxville native too, so this is home for you. This has been home for me uh, for since 46. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, we love it. Now, Sepia Tones this podcast, it's really diving into the history of how African Americans have influenced Appalachian music. And I want to know, how has this legacy shaped your music and how you perform? Well, of course, way before Sepia Tones existed. I've, I have been performing throughout the southern Appalachian region, yeah. including Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, and... Uh, the problem is that most people, when they think of Appalachia, they think of Jeb Clampett. Okay. You know, whatnot, Jeb Clampett. And uh, it's just that we're between one and a half to two and a half million Southern Appalachian black people, and that is a culture. And of course, uh, d I did things like uh, co produced a festival in West Virginia, okay. talking about John Henry, and then doing research and find out John Henry was a real person. And the songs John Hardy and whatnot, learning from people like Humber Walker, banjo player, uh, Anna Baker, a guitar player and banjo player, learning the old style music, the music <laughs> that we all share. Yeah. I was a, uh, uh, on the curative committee of the 2003 Smithsonian Festival, oh, wow. which talked about Scotland, Mali, and Southern Appalachia to show how those three cultures have influenced each other. Three cultures that you would think, oh my gosh, they're so different, there can't be any commonalities, and then of course there are. And that's <laughs> something that the podcast really dives into several times, is that you know people can be not only connected by music, but you can learn from different genres of oh, music right. as well. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. In Go fact, uh, when I was there at that festival, Smithsonian Festival, the first day the Malians were playing their Angonis and the Southern Appalachians were playing their fiddles and banjos and the Scots were drinking good scotch. Of course. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they started realizing the commonality of their music. They started learning each other their instruments and the Angoni is the grandfather of the, the banjos as we know it today. See. And it was brought to this country by the idea how to make these by the people who were brought from West Africa here as slaves. And it's so interesting. Again, music really does bring all people together, and there's so much history. You know, you just use the banjo there as an example, right. and there's so much history there. And I want to congratulate you as well, because I know oh. that you've recently recently received the 2022 Black Appalachian Storytellers Fellowship from the National Association of Black Storytellers and South Arts. So congratulations. Well, thank you thank so much you for so being much. here. Thank you so much for having us. And remember, listen to the podcast. Of course. And so now to that, you know, we do want to mention here that the Sepia Tones is what it's called. So it's a mini series. It's part of the Great Smoky Mountain Association's Smoky Mountain Air podcast. And it can be found on all major streaming services. Okay, you're seeing some of information about it here on your screen right now. And Sparky, thanks so much for being in here Thank today. Thank you so much, Lexi. Of Appreciate course. It. Guys, go check it out. We're going to share that information as well on WATE.com. We'll be right back.